This is Greg Remke working with Economic Thinking and American Logos. And here are just some notes uh, for one of the motions at the winter holidays open. I've recorded two other short uh, videos on the economics of the motions. So uh, move ahead here. So winter holidays open motion. This house as a feminist movement would publicly denounce trad wives. An info slide they give for background. It's the woman who prefers a traditional or ultra traditional role in marriage, including beliefs of women's places in the home, under the husband's protection. Some have chosen to leave their careers in business or public life to focus on their families, raise children, and have a social and have turned to social media to talk about the virtues of this lifestyle. So, competition to feminism is this uh, movement trying to say, hey, it's why not, why not stay home and raise the kids? Take care of your husband. So you can find more about the advocates of this, Darling Academy and the lady that runs it. And then articles in, the, uh, in magazines, newspapers, critical of it. This is in The Guardian, uh, article critical of the movement, the ideas, and so forth. And also some of the cultural beliefs of the people who are advocating uh, um, this, this return to traditional uh, models as an alternative to feminism, modern feminism. Obviously, I'm not the ideal person to speak on modern feminism and one thing or another. I'm going to reference economists who work on these issues uh, and link to some of their videos uh, in the next few minutes. So you can find more about this, of course, online. Uh, seems to me uh, argument for the affirmative is the motion itself is not necessarily attacking traditional housewives, but rather the trad wives entrepreneurs who were using social media to promote their particular version of uh, the traditional housewife. So that's one argument the affirmative could make, seems to me. Um, and this, you find this in the uh, quote, a quote from the article in The Guardian here, uh, a woman who uh, doesn't work so as to look after their kids, their husband, their home, and then talk about it nonstop about how great this is on social media. So that's being critical of it. However, the counterpoint to that is here we have again a traditional journalist like women or people writing in The Guardian or The New York Times critical of social media, critical of entrepreneurs who've left uh, mainstream media and have built up their own websites, uh, substack blogs, and other places where they can talk about ideas but not do the, uh, uh, the standard thing in the traditional media. So there's a number of different battles going on at the same time, perhaps. Now for the negative, I'd also, you might look at the homeschool world uh, where wives stay home, but they're also managing education for their schools. They're like managing the household and the school, um, which is a complicated process, often running business, many businesses. And then there's this broader world of homeschool cooperatives, often involving dozens of families um, teaching and taking classes, including debate clubs. So across the United States, there are a hundred or more homeschool debate clubs that the homeschool moms that you might call traditional wives are actually running, not only running businesses, sometimes coaching enterprises, also helping with the debate club, also teaching various classes and the way homeschooling is run. So there's a whole range of opportunities at home now, not just managing the household, which is, uh, I don't know if that fits in with Trat, and I'm sorry I turned, didn't turn off my mail thing, so I'll have to do this over maybe. Okay, um, a little background on this. One thing to think about is traditional work for women. Um, Around the world, traditional work for women is washing clothes by hand. That's one of the reasons they're, they're home and not in the workforce is it takes a lot of time to manage a household as it did in America. You know, when I was a kid, uh, uh, you know, we had a washboard when we first moved into the house and it took a lot of time to wash the clothes, get the food, cook the meals, manage, manage the household. Now we have modern conveniences, at least in the developing world. This uh, video by Hans Rosling from 2010, I highly recommend it. It's from the 2010 TED Women, uh, uh, and it's titled The Magic Washing Machine. And he talks about how, as a little kid, how amazed his grandmother was when they got their first washing machine. She wanted to watch every minute of it because she spent her whole life washing clothes by hand. And the key to escape that is not only access to electricity, 
but also to enough electricity to run a washing machine, which we have in the developing developed world, but most around the world don't. Rosling puts up a overhead where he looks at energy. He talks about people above the airline, the, the one billion who can fly airplanes and have their house full of gadgets that are developed. Then there's another billion in the world who have access to enough electricity to run a washing machine. But the other five billion in the world don't are under $40 a day and they wash their clothes by hand. Or, as he points out, it's the women who do that because it's the women's task around the world to wash clothes by hand, often, you know, getting water from nearby and bringing it. And he makes the point that access to electricity is key. Even if there's enough to run a light bulb or charge your cell phones, there are some 5 billion in 2010 who had not enough access to wash their clothes. So their life was, a lot of it was washing clothes each week. Now, his in 2010, uh, we now have an extra billion people. We have 8 billion people instead of 7 billion. And as I ran the numbers on this in terms of uh, rapid increase in economic uh, prosperity around the world, I judge that there's still 2 billion people below the wash line that can't afford enough electricity for washing machines. So anyway, it's a lot of work to run a household when you're poor. Uh, I encourage that, and, and there's more on the background there. So back to the, the more on the resolution. This uh, Jamie Lemke has an article in The, uh, the Hill from uh, uh, August 2020. And she's talking about the, the you know, when you talk about uh, traditional wives, one of the reasons wives were traditional for centuries and still around the world is they lack economic freedom. They didn't used to be able to own property and so forth. So she talks about the suffragette movement, which wasn't just about women being able to vote. Uh, it was access to legal rights so they could own property. They could be on the title. They could have access to a law degree. So the ability to make decisions for themselves in the legal system prevented women from doing this up until just, you know, the last uh, century. So that's an argument she makes there. Women need to have access to economic freedom so they can make their choices. So they're not forced to be in the home because they can't be anywhere else. They're forced to live, you know, like Saudi Arabia, women uh, aren't allowed to drive. Uh, they lack the legal freedoms to do that, or at least they did until recently. You can also see uh, the author discussing this in a women in economics discussion about the history of women's economic rights as part of their physical rights. So this seems to me relevant for the topic. There are people choosing to be home in this trad wives movement, but you want to make sure it's a choice and that they're not forced in it by legal restrictions that uh, deny them access. Also, uh, this is the America's Future Foundation, an article about how, again, women were property of their husbands. Um, and even if the, a free woman married a slave, she became owned, she was owned by the person who owned the slave. So the legal limitations of women's access to uh, economic freedoms and others was a big part of the problem. Okay, so uh, you can read more about that. Also, there's a presentation um, on Learn Liberty about the economics of the gender gap, which also, again, has to do with economic freedoms and access. If you have problems like um, health care restrictions, tax policy, Social Security policy that make it expensive, that is highly taxed women that go to the workforce, then you're providing an artificial subsidy that um, pushes them into uh, lifestyles that they may not want if they had broader economic freedoms. Okay, thank you for listening.